Today we will be trying something new. All of our hymns today can be found in our blue hymnal, the one that looks like this. Uh, we, we sent out notices and hope that all of you have your hymnals out and ready to sing. If you need a blue hymnal, please let us know via email or leave a message at the church office. We will be glad to deliver one for you. Join me now as we recite our litany for Easter. O Christ, after your resurrection, you appeared to your disciples. You breathed on them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. You gave joy and exultation to the whole creation. Through your victory, we pray to you. Hear us, Lord, Lord. O Christ, after your resurrection, you sent out your disciples to teach all nations and to baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You promised to be with them and, and us until the end of the world. Through your victory, we pray to you. Hear us, Lord, Lord. O Christ, through your resurrection, you lifted us up and filled us with rejoicing. Through your salvation, you enrich us with your gifts. Renew our lives and fill our hearts with joy. Through your victory, we pray to you. Hear us, Lord. O Christ, you are glorified by angels in heaven and worshiped on earth on the glorious feast of your resurrection. We pray to you. Hear us, Lord. Lord. Save us, O Christ our Lord, in your goodness. Extend your mercy to your people who await the resurrection and have mercy on us. Hear us, Hear us Lord, 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 Lord. O merciful God, you raised your beloved Son, and in your love you established him as head of your church and ruler of the universe. By your goodness we pray. Hear, Hear us, Lord, Lord. Lord. Our first hymn this morning is, is number 485, To God Be the Glory. In, in the, again, it's in your blue hymnal. Please join us.
guest, and that is that um, even though we're not meeting here in this building as a church, we still are the church, that we are children of God. And even though we don't meet on Sunday together, we are still required what God wants us to do. And I challenge each and every one of you who are listening to this video to do one small thing this week, whatever it may be, for your neighbor, for a stranger, for that person in the parking lot, whatever it may be, if it's running an errand or baking cookies or just having a phone conversation or sending a card. This, um, this is a very stressful time and it's a time that we're not used to and we are put on this earth to look after one another and um, that's my challenge to you and if you would like to, if you are a recipient of someone doing something good for you, post it on our Facebook page. Let us know what people are doing and that way we can inspire others to do the same, kind of a pay it forward thing. Okay, I just wanted to say that, so now let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to worship you freely everywhere and anywhere. Thank you for the technology that brings us together, even though we are apart. We look forward to the day we can all be reunited together in this place to worship you. I pray we can use every opportunity to praise you, rejoice in you, and to spread the good news everywhere. I pray you will always be first and foremost in our words, actions, and deeds, letting us be your hands and feet in this world. Help us to help others, lead us, and guide us on the path that you would have us take, no matter how hard or narrow the way may be, for we know that nothing is impossible with you. We ask that you give us strength and comfort to get through these difficult days, protecting us from feelings of loneliness, isolation. Help us to be a beacon of hope for those who are sick, struggling, and those who are taking care of them. We pray for those on our prayer list, those in our community and around the world. We continue to pray for everyone affected by COVID-19, the doctors, the nurses, the first responders, the military, the leaders of this country and around the world. Help us to build each other up, to support one another, and to be the change for the better. Even though this is an uncertain time, we can see you so clearly at work, people coming together to help one another. Sometimes it takes a crisis to make us aware of what really is important and to bring us back to you. It is a blessing to know that you are always with us holding our hand as we go through difficult and uncertain times. You have commanded us to be strong and courageous, not to be discouraged or afraid, because you will be by our side wherever we go. And for that, we are truly thankful and blessed to be called a child of God. In Christ's name, amen. <laughs> Sunday of Easter, Christ has risen and has appeared twice to the disciples. In our scripture, reading it this morning, we find seven frustrated disciples fishing by the Sea of Tiberias. They were frustrated that their beloved friend had been killed. They were frustrated with the world in which they lived. They were frustrated that their community cared little 
about a kinder, gentler world. They were frustrated that religion was killing people rather than saving them. They went back to what they knew, to the old familiar. They went back to fishing. But even there, they had worked and worked for nothing. Please listen to the word of the Lord as found in John 21, 1 through 19. <clears throat> After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. And they said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it, that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes where he was naked and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net that was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus had appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and, and to go wherever you wish. But when you grew old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, Follow me. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Our message today comes from the sermon entitled Recognition by Reverend David McDonald. Jesus knew the disciples were weariness. He knew the heartbreak of their souls. He came to feed them spiritually and physically. Just as he had washed their feet in the upper room and eaten supper with them, so he appeared after the resurrection, serving them breakfast and calling them to be his disciples and servants in the world. It was an image of service. As Presbyterians, we are heavily involved in programs such as Pennies for Hunger and the development of gleaming ministries and food banks because we are following the example of Jesus who provides for the physical needs of people. To save a soul is also to save a body. We believe that is what Jesus would do. After breakfast was over, Jesus and Peter had the well-known exchange and conversation saying, Simon, son of God, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Tend my sheep. 
This exchange was about love and service with a focus on the relationship between a perfect God and an imperfect humanity. How is God's love recognized? The way that Peter recognized Jesus was through the eyes of love. Peter became other-centered rather than self-centered. He became the servant of others so they would join him in serving Christ. He fixed breakfast on foreign shores so others would join him by the place at the fire pit. He fed others even as he has been fed. Jesus is recognized in his service to others. He came to the beach so that the disciples could make a positive identification and feel the warmth and depth of the Lord's forgiveness. And as Lynn challenged you earlier to go out and to do something good for somebody this week, and she gave you several examples, maybe a phone call, maybe a note, maybe a card, maybe a, 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 a gift through the mail, but reach out to someone and be the service that Jesus wants us to be. So let us go and serve the Lord, finding Jesus in our service to others. Gaze into the eyes of others and discover that we are all made in the image of God. Amen and amen. If you would join me in the Apostles' Creed, our affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done and earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Using your own blue hymnal, if you have one at home, please join us singing hymn number 376, Love Divine, All Love's Excelling, and we're going to sing verses 1 and 4.
And may the Lord bless and protect you. May the Lord's face radiate with joy because of you and be gracious to you, show you his favor, and give you his peace. Amen.